Hey guys, today we got the Nissan Versa S 2024 edition and let's jump into the specs right away. MSRP on this is 18,350. Engine is a 1.6 liter four cylinder. It has a CVT and it's front wheel drive. This gets 122 horsepower, 114 torque, which gets you 10.7 seconds for zero to 60. Not the fastest, but it'll get the job done. You do get 32 city, 40 highway and 35 combined. And this is right under 2,600 pounds. So getting onto the outside of the car, overall, the car is an electric blue metallic. It's a good color, not too bright, not too dark. I think it just gives a good vibrancy to the car. We do also have the 16 inch wheels on this. These are actually not standard. I'm gonna show off quickly just the 15 inch wheels with the hubcaps. I guess the nice thing about hubcaps is if you do gotta swap them out really easily, if you get any curb rash on any of them, just swap them out 40, 50 bucks for the whole set and go into any store. And again, you can make them look however you like, more sporty or at anything. But overall, just any price, 40, 50, kind of covers any hubcaps. And it's kind of great for a college car, especially when you're curb rashing them all the time. But getting onto the front side, we have the headlights on the front. There is no LEDs for these. These are actually bulbs, again, trying to just cut down the cost for this. The whole front bumper, just simple design, really can't go wrong with this. We have a nice Nissan logo, so that was also updated for the newer Nissans. There's really not much to cover on this. Same as we just had on the front side. On the back side, we also have the tail lights that have no LEDs, just simple bulbs. I guess trying to just cut costs again. Really simple, we gotta swap those out as well too. The bulb goes out, just go in there and just swap it out really easily. We also have the Nissan logo on the center, just white trim to it, so simple. Versa on the left side, so just so you know what you're driving as well too. And if you gotta get into the trunk, I will say there is no button, so you will have to pull out your key or open it up from the front. We just put that into the keyhole turn it and it opens up. I know I did kind of make a fun of the car a little bit there, but we do have about 14.7 cubic feet of space. It's actually on the smaller side for uh, the Versa, but you can also get the 15 cubic feet if you get the higher end models. But again, for this size car, it's actually really roomy. The opening is really wide, so if you actually have to store a lot of things, it's actually really good. But if you open down here, we also do get a spare tire, so that is kind of great to have in case anything goes wrong, especially at this price point where they're trying to cut costs. Again, that's really good that they have a spare tire. And let's do the trunk challenge at this point. So inside the trunk now, it's actually really spacious again. It actually has pretty good height to it too. So if you have some tall stuff, again, good space overall. So back outside, if you wanna close the trunk, you actually have to just use your hand and just manually move it down. There is no button on this one, but overall really gets the job done at this price point. And then final thing to note on the backside, there is some carbon fiber that you do have on the bottom lip or the diffuser. It's actually not carbon fiber. It's actually like a plastic looking carbon fiber look, which again, I guess gives it a tiny bit of sportiness. So to get inside the car, of course, again, we don't have the special key fobs that most cars have. You will have to simply just put in the key, turn it, and then just open the door. But once you have it open, I do want to show off some of the controls on the seat. So they are manual, but I will say, I guess the benefit of having manual controls is they won't give out kind of like electronic systems do. So just simple adjustment from the front, the back, the backrest, or yeah, just raising the seat. But at this point, let's get inside the car and let's see what we get inside. So once inside, we have the steering wheel right in front of us. So we get a three spoke steering wheel. We get some simple controls on the left side, the right side, center, you just have the Nissan symbol with the white kind of trim on it. And then right behind that, we do get a small screen, which does show like some of the HD, but just simple, just controls there. You have the RPM on the left and miles per hour on the right. Really can't go wrong with this. So getting onto the center stuff, we have the seven inch display. Again, kind of just gets the job done. Yeah, touch screen anything you need for your music or just adjusting the apps that are on there. Really gets just really simple. You have the AC controls right below that. You can also pop your phone there. So you have like a little bit of cubby space. My S24 fits there completely fine. But I think if you do have a really big phone, it might actually not fit there. You do get an aux cable. So you actually want to plug in your music or anything like that. Though, unfortunately, I will say most phones don't have the aux anymore, but I guess it's kind of nice that they just keep it there. You have a USB port as well there too, and a 12 volt as well. Behind that as well, you also have the Prindle, that same carbon fiber plastic that we see on the back of the car, also on the inside. So I guess keeping that aesthetic all around the car. And then behind that, we have the handbrake right in the center between you and your passenger. You just simply have it here. We actually see that there's not much height here. So I will say it's actually pretty low. So between you and your passenger, most cars usually have like the big like gap or maybe like a, some storage here. But overall, you get your two cup holders, you get a little bit of storage here, a little bit more storage back here, which might be for the back people. And then you also get two USB ports in case you gotta use those as well too. But I will also show the bigger water bottle. So now I got the water bottle, which I just ran for. So if you put in the cup holders, it doesn't fit as expected. And I don't expect it to fit in most cars, kind of just showing it off real quick. The little cubby space here doesn't fit. The back one here doesn't fit either. So unfortunately, if you do have a big a hydro flask or any big water bottle. You just have to pop it on to your friend's seat or hopefully they hold it for you or just throw it in the back as well too. And then final little thing, two things I want to mention up here. So you do have like some light switches, which are kind of interesting. I feel like they kind of feel like house lights. 
at least like the older switches. So you kind of just like flick them on and off compared to like some cars we kind of just press it in. And then you do have your sun, re sun visor, which is really chunky. So I guess if you really got to cover the sun or I guess if you're like a shorter height, it does actually get really low. So if you got to cover the sun really well, I will say that is also a good benefit for that too. And loud too. So getting into the back seats. So we're going to jump in. It's already in my driver's side position. I will say, honestly, my knee room's not bad, but I will say my head is touching a little bit. So if you are going to have like tall people back here, maybe they got to like slouch a tiny bit, which I guess at this point I'm still comfortable and everything. I don't know about space for a third passenger in between us, to be honest. But if there was three people, it'd be kind of tight for three adults. Three kids would probably be fine, but overall, I wouldn't recommend three adults back here. But again, it's a smaller car, kind of more efficient and everything. On the center, no AC controls, but you do kind of get that like cubby space in case you got to store things or use the two USB-C, not USB-C, but just regular USB ports from the front. But overall, just I feel completely fine. The seats are actually comfortable. I actually want to mention that too. I would say typically cloth seats for whatever reason are really comfy at least in my opinion. But again, just simple. As for the drive on this car overall, again, just simple car. Smoothness is fine. It goes where you want to go. Uh, accelerates tip as typical. Again, there's nothing really to stand out, I will mention. So overall, if you're looking for anything, that might not be what you should be looking for if you're looking at this car, but overall, it just gets the job done. I have no complaints to this freeway driving. It's not too noisy or anything. No blind spots or anything like that. Again, visibility is good. Overall, you really can't go wrong with this. The speaker system is all right. Nothing wrong with it either, again overall just getting a simple car for, at this price so that covers everything for the nissan versa s 2024 model again under 19k i think it's a simple car again if you guys like the video like and subscribe throw me down some comments down below again any cars you want me to review or any questions or any feedback i'll appreciate that but again until next time Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I just have to put my weight on the outside corners, not in the middle. <laughs>